I'm back with another motivational breakfast moment, mukbang. I'm going to pour my water in my can right quick. Yep. The can is dry. I haven't even really been using this can in the last couple of days. I've just been drinking out of the bottle. Because I have been doing a lot of working out. Oh, pretty busy. Pretty busy. Let me put my earrings on. So. Oh, these ads. I swear. You can't even cut on, pull up the Bible app with ad. It's sad. They put ad on everything to get paid from everything. Make you get paid. Make you, literally, they get paid because they make you watch it. You can't even flick off of the ads off of the Bible app. But then you get ads on your videos and you don't even get paid from these ads on our video. And I've been monetized for years now. But it's okay. I'm tri I ain't tripping. I'm about to have me some breakfast, I'm about to get through eating, then I'm about to get myself together for church. Yep, that's what I'm about to do. Get ready. Got a job to do. I got to go teach Sunday school. I'm trying to find the holes in my ear. I hope my food don't get cold. But anyway, while I'm trying to find this hole, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for waking me up this morning, blessing me to live to see a brand new day. I thank you for this food that you have blessed me to be able to have and put, put before me. And I thank you, God. I just thank you for being God all by yourself. I thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. I thank you for, for my church. I thank you for my pastor. I thank you for all of my sisters and brothers in Christ. I thank you, God, for each and every member of my family. Lord, I thank you. And I can't wait to see my AC and my Jaja. Lord, I thank you. I ask that you please bring them home to me safe and sound. I'm unharmed, untouched. Lord, the same as they was before they left, but even better in spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for all of my subscribers, my uh, followers. Thank you for all of my YouTube family and friends. I thank you for all of my social media families, Lord. And I ask that you bless them all in a special way today. Keep us covered in the blood. Order our steps in your word. Direct God and lead our path, God. Tame this tongue of mine. Create within us a clean heart and renew your right spirit within us. In Jesus' name. Let this food be a nourishment for mind, body, soul, and spirit. Let also be a help to the weight loss. Take out any defilement. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yeah, I have my coffee. I have my coffee right here. Yeah, I know I'm left-handed. Y'all notice I always put stuff on my left hand because I'm left-handed. <laughs> so, we have some brown sugar oatmeal here. See, they are still hot. See the smoke? And we have us a beef hot dog. And we have a toast. And some water. And uh, we're going to be doing reading over the verse of the day and devotion, devotion of the day. The verse of the day is going to be coming from Jude chapter 1 verse 4. And the devotion of the day is going to be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. And the title is Defending Against Temptation. We become trapped, unable to spend time with God because we are for, focused on something else. So the title today is Defending Against Temptation, okay? But for now, we're going to go and start eating. It is 6.57 a.m. on Sunday morning. So I'm doing all this before church. My Sunday school service started at 10 o'clock. I 
I already know what I'm going to wear. I picked out this yellow dress. So that's what I'm going to be wearing. I got to take my hair down. I mean, calm it down, and then I'm going to kind of bend it a little. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this toast, I am going to but put it in a skillet with a little butter and just smash it down. I ain't want nothing on it. I'm eating a little kind of little heavy breakfast today because yesterday I didn't really eat anything. I only ate one meal yesterday. One. And that was some, um, I made me some fish tails, catfish tails. I like catfish tails, yeah. I put this bread right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at IAG Farms on my TV. Well, that's what I was looking at before I started this video. I got to get back and load up to post in my shorts. I hate when I fall off from doing my shorts because them shorts really bring good revenue to my page. It really do. But it's okay. It is okay. Happy Sunday to everybody. How you guys doing today? IEG Farms having them a fish fry today. If y'all don't know them, they have a YouTube channel called IAG Farm. It's all about God. Yesterday, I ain't really do much of them, but stay in the bed, lay around. It was a rainy day yesterday. And you know when it rains, your body hurts. If you have arthritis, anybody that know, know that it makes your body hurt. It makes your joints hurt. So, I'm really not feeling this open though. But, just trying to put something healthy in my body. I ain't gonna do it. Tell y'all no lie, I can eat fish every day. Some type of fish every day. If I can have it fried. Baked fish is okay. If I eat baked fish, it gotta be whole baked fish. I don't really care for fish baked if it's not whole. Because if it mess around and you get dry, it's a wrap. I ain't going to want it. So what did y'all do yesterday? What y'all do for the weekend, shall I say? On IAG Farm, they having some fried fish. They got, they got a fish pond on their farm. And they had some fried uh, croppings, bass. I think they had one perch. They doing some shrimps and some hush puppies. 
And it looks so good. And some french fries, I think. Homemade french fries at that. And they're doing it all outside. They're cooking it on their fryer outside. Hmm. I love that family. IAG Farm is they is that's a beautiful family. They have some God fearing peoples. I'm trying to debate if I want to do me like a 15 minute cardio workout before church. Y'all don't know I'm getting addicted to this cardio. For real. I just feel like the more I move, work my body out, the better my bones and my joints and stuff will be. Now, because I've been doing so much workout, and because it's new to me, my 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 joints are so, especially my knees. Whew, but the feeling that I get when I work out is priceless. It's priceless. Mm. My archives are dirty. Let's jump into this word. I might recall that church today, and I might not. We'll see. The verse of the day is coming from Jude chapter 1 verse 4 and it reads as this But there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That comes from Jude chapter 1 verse 4. The inspiration tells us that we are forgiven and made new by the grace of God. But grace doesn't give us a license to continue in our sin. Do you guys understand it? Because we are because we have been forgiven and we have been made new once we repent of our sins we are forgiven and we are new starting over again it doesn't it doesn't mean that we can go on and continue to do that sin because we are under grace some people do that some people think oh as long as i can repent on my right it don't work like that Every time when you repent of something and you go back and do it again, remember you are taking Jesus Christ right back to the cross. So it says, but grace doesn't give us a license to continue in our sin. To cheapen God's grace is to deny not only what Jesus has done, I just said that you're taking him back to the grave, but his lordship when we choose not to live according to what we believe, what we say we believe. Now, the heart that is saved by grace is also a heart that is changed by grace. So if you have been saved by grace, 
you have been changed by grace also. So the things that you used to do, you no longer want to do them because you've been changed by the grace of Jesus Christ. You have been made new. The devotion is coming from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 and 13. And it read as thus, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, take heed, lest he fall. Wherefore, let him that think he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. He said it's common to man, okay? To man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able to bear. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. God, listen, it said, <clears throat> no temptation can take you. Nothing but that which is common to man. And then God said that he is faithful. And he will not suffer us to be tempted more than we are able to bear. More than we are able to bear, okay? He said, but with the temptation, he will also make give us an escape way out of that temptation. He will give us a way out, guys, okay? That we may be able to bear it. Listen, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee. From idolatry, I speak as I speak as to a wise man. Judge ye what I say. Let's go back up right here. I want to go back up to one. First Corinthians chapter uh, chapter ten, verse one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. God said he 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 don't want us to be ignorant. He would not have us to be ignorant. He said, I would not that she should be ignorant. How that all our father were under the clouds and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. I want to read that out of this Bible. So let me pull this Bible out. That's 1 Corinthians 10. I like to read so you guys can understand. Because sometimes I might not explain something good, but it's okay. The Holy Spirit will come in and lead and guide and direct me at just in the nick of time. Remember, he always give us an escape. So we're going to go back up to 10, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. And it read as thus. This is the English Standard Version of the Bible, okay? Friends, I want to remind you that all of our ancestors walked under the cloud and went through the sea. This was like being baptized and becoming followers of Moses. All of them also ate the same spiritual food and they drank the same spiritual drink, which flowed from the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. But most of them did not please God, so they died, and their bodies were scattered all over the desert. What happened to them is a warning to keep us from wanting to do the same evil thing. God don't want us to do the same thing that our ancestors did. He want us to, to be as like Jesus, okay? They worship idols. And just as the scripture says, the people sat down to eat and drink. Then they got up to dance around. So don't worship idols. Some of those peoples did shameful things. In a single day, about 23,000 of them died. In a single day, 23,000 died. Don't be an idol worshiper. Worship the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
We don't do the things that our ancestors did. We do, we do better. We be better. We believe in Christ. Don't do shameful things as they did. And don't try to test Christ. Don't test Jesus. Please don't. Don't try to test Christ as some of them did and were later bitten by poisonous snakes. Don't even grumble as some of them did and were killed by a destroyed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as a warning to us. All this was written in the scripture to teach us who live in these last days. All this, listen to this again. It said these things happen to them as a warning to us. The things that happen to our ancestors and to the peoples in the Bible happen as a warning to us. Okay? As a warning to us. All this in the Bible was written to teach us who live in these last days. Okay? Even if you think you can stand to temptation, be careful not to fall. If you think you can withstand or stand against the temptation that come up against you, God's words say be careful. Be careful not to fall. Okay? You are tempted in the same way that everyone else is tempted. But God can be trusted. But God can be trusted not to let you be tempted too much. God ain't going to let you be tempted too much. He will show you how to escape from your temptation. He will provide a way so that you will not fall into diverse of temptation. He got a way for you. He done made a way for you to escape from that temptation. My friends, you must keep away from idols. Come on now. I am speaking to you as people who have enough sense to know what I am talking about. Come on, God. When we drink from the cup that we ask God to bless, isn't that sharing in the blood of Christ? When we eat the bread that we break, isn't that sharing in the blood of, in the same body of Christ? By sharing in the same loaf of bread, we become one body, even though there are many of us. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't the peoples of Israel sharing in the worship when they gather around the altar and eat the sacrifices offered there? As I am saying, that either the idols or the food sacrificed to them is anything at all. He said, am I saying that either the idols or the food sacrifice to them is anything at all no he is not that food is really sacrificed to demons and not to god come on so worshiping idols and getting up and dancing around the the altar and stuff eating the food that food if you are idol worshiper it is you are sacrificing that food to demons and not to God. And then they say, I don't want you to have anything to do with demons. Come on. You cannot drink from the cup of demons and still drink from the Lord's cup. You cannot drink from the cup of the devil, the cup of Satan, and still think you can drink from the cup of the Lord. No, not happening. Okay, you cannot eat at the table of demons and still eat at the Lord's table. We would make the Lord jealous if we did that. And you do not want a jealous God. And we are not stronger than the Lord. Verse 23, talking about always honor God. Some of you say we can do whatever we want to, but I tell you that not everything may be good or helpful. We should think about others and not about ourselves. However, when you buy meat in the market, go ahead and eat it. Keep your conscience clear by not asking where the meat come from. The scripture says the earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. Did you hear that? It said However, when you go to the market, when you go, when you when you buy meat at the market at the store, go ahead 
and eat it. He said, and keep your conscience clear by not asking where the meat come from. Don't ask where it come from. Just eat it. You know why? Listen to this. The scripture says the earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. If an unbeliever invites you to dinner and you go and you want to go, then go. Eat whatever you are served and don't cause a problem for someone's conscience by asking where the food came from. Our food is good. Just because you don't like something, it don't make that food not good for nobody else, okay? That's just you. Now, don't cause a problem for someone conscious by asking where the food come from. But if you are told that it has been sacrificed to idols, don't cause a problem by eating it. I don't mean a problem for yourself, but for the one who told you. Why should my freedom be limited by everyone else's conscience if I give thanks for what I eat? Why should anyone accuse me of doing wrong? Come on. Listen. Bless that food and eat it. That's all it's saying. Don't cause a problem by telling nobody, oh, you eat that, you don't supposed to eat that, or that ain't good. Don't do it. The word is telling you that, not me. So if you mad, if it offends you, take it to Christ. Take it to God. Because bring it to me, it ain't going to, it is not going to satisfy what the problem is that's going on with you. Now, when you eat, drink, or do anything else, always do it in honor of God. Don't cause problems for the Jews or the Greeks or anyone else who belong to the to God's church. I always try to please others instead of myself. In the hope that many of them will be saved, you must follow my example as I Follow the example of Christ. Hallelujah. Now let's read the rules of worship. I am proud of you because you always remember me and obey my teaching I gave you. Now I want you to know that Christ is the head over all men and all men and a man is the head over a woman. Come on here. But God is the head over Christ. This means that any man who prays or prophesies with something on his head brings shame to his own head. But any woman who prays or prophesies without something on her head brings shame to her head. In fact, she may as well shave her head. A woman should wear something on her head. It is a disgrace for a woman to shave her head or cut her hair. But if she refuses to wear something on her head, let her cut off her hair. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It said, men were created to be like God and to bring honor to God. This means that a man should not wear anything on his head. Women were created to bring honor to men. It was the woman who was made from a man. It was the woman who was made from a man and not the man who was made from a woman. He was created for her. She was created for him. And so because of this and also because of the angels, a woman ought to wear something on her head as a sign of her authority. As far as the Lord is concerned, men and women need each other. It is true that the first woman came from a man, but all other men have been given birth by women. Come on here. Yet God is the one who created everything. Ask yourself if it is proper for a woman to pray without something on her head. Isn't it unnatural and disgraceful for men to have long hair? But long hair is a beautiful way for women to cover her head. This is how things are done in all of God's churches. And that's why none of you should argue about what I have said. I just read to you 1 Corinthians uh, 10, the whole entire chapter, all the way down to the 33rd verse. And then I read to you 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, all the way down to the 16th verse, okay? And, may, and the word of the Lord is blessed. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys after I had 
got up and I read the the um the verse of the day and devotion of the day, I decided to share that with you guys because it was so interesting and it's just it's it's what we need. It's so much of what we need. We need to know the way, the truth, and the light. Because now, guys, we are living in the last days. But the thing is, we've been living in the last days ever since Jesus Christ went to the cross. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to get ready to end this video. But I hope you guys take heed to the word. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Defending against temptation. Knowing that you don't have to be. You are not stuck in temptation. Because God have already made an escape way for us out of it all. He said he would not put no more on us than we that which we can bear. That which is common to man. Okay. So it's nothing. Nothing that we can't get out of it if we want to because Jesus Christ is right there. He is our way out of no way. I love you guys. I thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone have a blessed day today. Um, the verse of the day, once again, came from Jude chapter 1, verse 4. The devotion of the day, again, came from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. And I read chapter 11 down to the 16th verse, defending against temptation. And it says we have, we become trapped and unable to spend time with God because we are focused on something else. And that is so much so true. Our focus often tend to, we tend to lose our focus from focusing on God because we get caught up in the things that's going on around us in this world. We have to remember to stay focused on the Lord at all times. But God knows that we are human. He knows our flaws. He knows our faults. He knows everything about us, okay? Everything about us. So all we have to do is take it to God. But the uh, inspiration on the devotion say, what is our defense against temptation? What is our defense against temptation? It say most of us have been... In a time of our life where we have had just had enough and end up giving into every enticing urge, every hint of desire, getting out of this mindset requires an understanding of the process of temptation. So true. Though it may not always seem like it when temptation strikes, it is a gradual process. This is a good thing. It means that if we become aware of it, we can cut it off at any stage. That's so true. And I read from reading and studying the Bible a long time ago. I understood that a sin is not a sin, does not become a sin to you until it begin to, until it begin to, to tag at you, snag at you. Okay, like just say if somebody is smoking, smoking ain't going ain't not a sin to them. They don't see themselves doing something wrong. But when that thing begin to nag at them and begin to 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 touch, click on their heart and stuff, then it'll become a sin to them, and they might decide to do something about it. Typically, temptation starts in our mind. Mm -hmm. The tempted person set up an imagined scenario. God has blessed us with the ability to create an entire experience out of nothing, using just our mind. But like so many of God's gifts, we must be careful not to abuse it. Fantasies may seem harmless if we keep them in our mind and don't bring them out into the real world. That is so true. A sin is not a sin until it tempts you, okay? Now, listen. And once that sin tempts you, if you act on it, then that sin becomes reality. But long as it's, but before then, it's just a, a figment of your imagination. It's just a thought in your mind. It's just a scenario in your mind. Okay? But it say fantasies may seem harmless if we keep them in our mind and don't bring them out into the real world, but they can lead us down a winding path, eventually enslaving our minds, and we become trapped, unable to spend time with God because we are focusing on something else. However, there is good news. God is faithful. 
Mm -hmm. He's faithful motivators. God is faithful. And when he asks for his help, when we ask him for help, he can show us how to escape our imprisonment. Temptation begins and ends in the mind. So that is where with God as our general, we wage war on the temptation of the mind. Instead of fantasy, we fill our minds with the word of God and we feed on it daily so that our sin will be uprooted and our thoughts will be transformed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then guess what? We are free. Our mind has been made free. I hope that you guys got something out of this. Let's pray, and I'm going to end the video on that note. Father God, I want to thank you for keeping our minds steady, Lord. And Lord, we look to your word for substance. And God, we ask that you feel us. Lord, if we need anything else, we come to you. We know that we can call on you. We can depend on you, God. God, we ask you to help us keep our mind clear so that we can continue to pray to you. Keep our thoughts pure, God, so that we will be righteous, be a righteous servant in your eyes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, help us, Lord. We need you now, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for sending Jesus to cleanse us of our sin and to give us a new life in you. Lord, we surrender our life to Jesus, Lordship, and we reject the power and the control of sin in our life, God. Please, God, empower us by your spirit to walk in obedience to your truth, Lord, and to live in your grace, God, so that all who see us may know that we are changed and that we are yours. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. I hope you guys got something out of it. Until the next video, stay safe, stay blessed, stay prayed up, keep the faith, say a prayer for me. And remember, we're all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace. And until the next video, bye.